take me to the bloody cave because you are a cave man actually <laughs> you are the ultimate cave man i tell you why you are a cave man you don't care who will think what of you i don't think it matters to you the cave man did care and this is the difference between the artist and other people other people are continuously layering themselves and the artist is delayering so you don't have the burden of civilization resting on your shoulder the cave man did not that fellow wanted to paint he painted that fellow didn't want to go to hunt he sat in that corner and crouched that fellow wanted to make love he made love so you are a cave man when i first met you i could relate to you because you know spontaneity is such an important thing my daughter picked up your business card and smelled it here you are you are the cape man because your your paintings have a smell cape man for the first time related to the world through smell and there's a lot of touch in your painting so smell touch touch smell so touch is important smell is important everything else you know you explore through touch smell touch smell so there's a lot of touch and smell in your work you're actually a man in love with energy so this calcutta police is a horse you're not in love with the horse you're almost feeling sad about the horse because it is about what people will do with that horse the horse is not flying in your head the horse is in a stable This horse in the stable behind New Market was like money in the vault, and you talked about setting money free, put you know wings. Money is a bird. Later on, I'm seeing your horse in three films. One, I'm seeing your horse as the horse which is power, domination, and, uh, and then comes a time that uh, the horse is the horse. If you're walking in Paris. You don't have to announce yourself. You don't have to say anything. You have to be yourself. You're not there to impress anybody. So that the horse has gone through that phase. Your present horse is a liberated horse, which is not a prisoner of this table, not even prisoner of Paris. Actually, the universe is expressing itself through that horse. Through period, how is the woman progressing? And then a time comes actually where neither the horse nor the woman are important. The color is important. What happens when the horse melts into the woman? The woman melts into the color. What happens to the color? Your painting, in some ways, is like a river. You have seen your source. You have seen midstream. It is a progression. And there's an expanse. You're a very interesting artist. All artists must absorb pain. Pain is the paint brush, and life is the paint. What you are doing, you are continuously really taking it, laughing, and you are, you know, then dipping into it in color. So you are a happy person. You're a happy artist. You're in love with life. Your horse. Starts in the stable, then your horse, just to the horse, then your horse is the universe expressing itself through the horse form. I see something similar with your women also. Your women here, any of these three, your women are all, you know, they're European women here. But I most love the one where there's no face. She is what you actually said with natural beauty. She is in forest. This is the progression of Shumbit's consciousness. Paris actually taught you to love form. But today you are not about form. Today you are about formlessness. But you can't go to formlessness unless you love form. And you have told this to me many times. You taught me to see the linkage between church architecture and art. There's a rapid evolution of european art during the period of christianity you went to europe you learned to appreciate form you didn't see form as something superfluous you saw interconnectedness you are a great 
guy actually. For you, the idea of form was never standalone. You saw form in a context. <laughs> so all your women in between, one idea of femininity, your woman, was in that period, and then comes natural beauty, where she is not just the rainforest. She actually, she's pretty. You know, you the caveman, I can feel, you know. You, you have never made love in your life, so you're touching and seeing, you know, you're touching the lights and you're smelling, okay? so you're touching again and then, you know, I can imagine you thrilled and nervous and then all your thrill and nervousness just melts away and you realize that you are nothing without her. Then you become one. This is that room for you. There's a lot of purity. And at the level of pure, there's nothing pervert. She's pure. She's as pure as purity gets. So, all work of art is about purity. In the way you paint, in the way you speak, you have to be decoded. You have to be actually enjoyed. Dawn is breaking. You and the pure woman are making love. And this is, once day breaks, you'll go your way and she must go her way because you don't want her to be the hostess table. This is the last time, you know, you're gingerly making love to her. She's making love to you. Actually, it is not anymore about love making. It's all getting fused up together. Um, before the river actually completely loses itself into the ocean, there's a phase. There is that calmness to it. There is that sense that, okay, I don't need to travel anymore. Yet, it is not the complete union, it's not the complete surrender. And there is fear in it. The fear is, after this, will there be any color? Will there be anything? We talk about N, power of N. This is just one, one hour before the power of N. Oh, it's so, so good. You told me about root, trunk and fruit. In alignment. The universe is about alignment. Art is about alignment. If I break all the colors and throw them away and they're all jumbled up, I cannot comprehend anymore. You know, I cannot have pleasure anymore. To you, pleasure is very important. And not in a way that you'll feel guilty afterwards. Your kind of pleasure is a very different kind of pleasure. It is the way the French taught you. And another very interesting thing about you, and your work, everything is a continuum for you. You may be in a different phase of that continuum. You don't reject the beginning and you're not afraid of where it will take you. On one hand, you are the product of the refugee colony. You are not rejected. That's why you come back. I remember your first learning to appreciate the Western classical music. Your first love with form. So you see that as continuum. You see art college and then you discovered yourself like, you know, all these colors burst in your face when you went to, to the West. And in that continuum, you saw, just as you left the slum behind, the art college behind, and then that is uh, There's no conflict between any of the phases of your life. That's the beauty, you know. You are a happy person. The caveman is a happy person. And the caveman was never bored. And you are never bored. None of your painting have any sense of boredom. I can make any profound statement. I can make any critique. But the caveman was never bored for a single moment. The caveman was collaborating with the universe. So your work is a continuous collaboration. Actually, you are not using color. You are saying, come, let's play.